You never really know what people are thinking. You could literally be sitting next to somebody, laughing and kicking, hugging each other for years. Whole time, this person jealous. This person wants you to stay in a certain position. And if you go above that position, there are literally some people who will pull some strings to bring you right on back down. Some people may sit right next to you and plot and plan for your downfall. And it's important for you to know so that you can move on from these people. Now, it's interesting because I have been getting told for a long time to stay away from a certain person. And of course, me, I'm just like, but why? God, tell me what they did. Tell me what they do. And so God has literally allowed me to be in the presence of people that he told me to stay away from so that he could pull back the veil to show me why he said stay away from them. Y'all have people that you are around or maybe you were around them in the past. This don't even have to be people you're in front of right now. But these people wanted to see you fail. And it was not because you were, you know, doing something so great. It's because of how they felt about themselves. Kind of the whole crabs in a barrel thing. So today I'm going to be telling you specifically about someone who was your friend. Y'all was kicking. But this person had plans for you. You got yourself out of these plans that they had for you and you were able to excel and do better. But you didn't know how this person really felt. In fact, for some of you guys, there's a confession coming. And this confession is going to rock your socks. For some of you guys, I ain't going to hold you. Because the way it, was, it happened to me, for some of you guys, you might get balled up in a fetal position and cry for hours and hours when God revealed to you these things that need to be revealed. I think I heard T.D. Jakes say, the breakthrough is in the breaking. So it may break your heart to find out how somebody really, really feels, but you're going to be so relieved and so grateful and so thankful that God actually showed you because then your mind is going to say, you know what? I could have been to this. Or I could have been in that. If I would have never got away from this person, things could have took a turn and my life would have been in complete chaos. So this is how you know this message is for you, okay? There are three criteria that you must meet in order for this to be your message, okay? First of all, this person that I'm talking about is one specific person. You have known this person for at least two years, period. So you have known this person for at least two years years okay now for some of you guys you've known this person for 10 years 15 years 20 years all right but at least minimum two years second of all when you guys were friends you were like two peas in a pod for some of you guys this could be an ex or somebody but when you were together y'all was like attached at the hip and then third, you've been separated for this person for quite some time. Could be six months, could be a year, 20 years, 50 years, however long it has been. Okay. So if you meet those three criteria, then that means this message is for you. And there has got to be um, a lesson. You have to learn the lesson. Okay. And for some of you guys, you're going to hear this message. You, you're going to be like, you know what, God, I heard you tell me not to be around the people and I'm just not going to be around. Okay. But for some of you guys, you're going to walk into this situation and you're going to have to listen for these key things. So, you know, okay, this is that person. Okay. Some of you guys have people that are coming back into your life after years of separation. And it's going to seem like, oh my God, we're supposed to reconcile. But these key elements are going to help you to realize, <gasps> Oh no, this whole time you was that snake. Okay, so I want you guys to choose. We're going to choose letters today, okay? Because remember, this is a confession. Some of you guys have somebody who was a friend of yours, y'all separated, and there was something that happened in between the time that y'all wasn't talking. And this person is now coming back around and they will confess something to you. So, that's what we're going to be talking about, the confession. I need you know, to know the confession, okay? So you're going to be choosing your confession. Now, over on Patreon, these are more the cautionary notes, okay? This is the if you really want to know type thing because some information you may not even want to know, okay? I ain't going to hold you because if you don't want to be sitting all heartbroken and sad, you may not want to know these things. But if you really want to know uh, deeper into like the jealousy and the envy and, you know, these kind of like plans that this person had for you, and how deep it really goes, then 
join us on Patreon. Uh, I'm introducing now to you guys for the first time the Waterverse, okay? And over in the Waterverse, you can be a rising star, a superstar, or a megastar, okay? So go over there immediately following this video to watch the second half of these messages, okay? But in the meantime, choose your message and I will let you guys know the confession. If you chose number one, you are about to get a confession that while you and this person were separated, they dogged you out. The confession is they were secretly mad at you for something that they never told you. But you know who they did tell? Some of your ex-friends, maybe even some of your family members. They're going to confess to you, I dogged you out in front of people that you know. This is the thing. If they dogged you out in front of people that you know, you have seen those people since that time and they never said anything to you. This person had all kind of negative, low vibrational things to say. They were making things up, embellishing on the story. And remember, these are things that you didn't even know that they felt. So they're explaining this to your friends, your family members, and these people never came back and told you this is what they said. Meanwhile, this person, your friend, your ex, they never said it to you. So in a way, they dry snitch. They're going to dry snitch on like some of your old friends or your family members. Okay. So in them confessing to you, listen, I dogged you out. I, I, I called you these names. I said these things. They're going to be telling you who they said it to. Now, this is the other part that I need you to consider. When this person was dogging you out to these people, they had the impression that y'all would never be friends again or y'all would never see each other again. So for a select percentage of you guys, it's not that they didn't tell you because they didn't want to tell you. It's just that they figure it's probably something you shouldn't know. Um, they probably felt like they were protecting you because the person said some really mean and hurtful things. And so they figure, uh, why come in and disturb your peace? So if you chose number one, I wouldn't be too mad or press too much emphasis on the people who knew what this person was saying behind your back. But I would put more so the emphasis on the person who had these feelings and never said anything to you and decided that we're never going to be friends again, so I might as well go around and dog you out. And let's hold that right there. Come on, bring, bring, bring that on back, please. Um, so you thought just because we wasn't friends no more that that gave you the right to go dog me out? And then we're supposed to come back to, to be friends, and that's supposed to be okay? So you may want to consider that. Because this is the part where God may be like, okay, that's just the tip of the iceberg. That's just a little bit. You don't need to know everything. Okay, they confess. They say what they got to say. Move it along, right? But if you're anything like me, you'd be like, well, ain't that okay? They, they, they told me. Mm. It gets deeper. Way deeper. Okay? So my best advice, if they confess to you, this is what I said, this is what I did, Please know that is only the tip of the iceberg. And they did a lot more and said a lot more to other people, and they didn't make that confession yet. I'm feeling it like if there's one confession, there's two confessions. And maybe three and four confessions. But the thing is, this is the one that I know if we end up being friends again and we go back into that same group, they're going to whisper in your ear and tell you, hey, he said this, he said that. I can't believe you guys are friends. She said this, she said that. Okay, so the only reason this person is making this confession is though so that they can save their butt in the long run, just in case y'all run into the people that they was talking mess about. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's get to the next one. If you chose number two, since the time of you and this person's separation. This person has been watching you. They're going to confess. Oh, yeah, I looked you up and I saw that you were doing this and I saw that you were doing that. They are not going to tell you that they were jealousy watching. They were watching with evil eyes. They were speaking to the phone screen, the computer screen, as they were watching you. And they were saying, of course, low vibrational negative things. But it was more so, I don't want to say spell casting or word cursing, but they were saying things like, that ain't going to last. Ah, please. And they were hoping 
that things would go south. So what they saw is like, you're going to seek and you're going to find, and you may not like what you find. And they didn't like what they found. They found you successful or they found you happy. They found you doing something more than they could have ever imagined. Now, for some of you guys, number two is more so about like an ex. And so they may confess to you, oh yeah, I knew you were doing that. And your thing is, it's deeper than that. I think I've said that so many times throughout this video, it's deeper than that. Because if, oh yeah, I was watching you, I saw you had a this, then they were watching and they saw that and they saw that and they saw something else. They saw that as well. The thing that I keep getting for number two is that this person never wanted to see you in that position. They never wanted to see you there. Okay. People have this sick, twisted idea that they are in control of you. They are in control of your destiny, your future, and whatever they thought was going to happen for you, that's what they were set on. So they're going to confess, yeah, I saw you. I noticed you was doing this. And they, they're going to give you a rundown of things that you've done maybe years ago. And you're going to be like, man, you saw that? Whole time. They never reached out to you. They never said anything to you. It, was, it wasn't anything, you know, uh, communicative happening between you guys. But remember, in the background, they were talking to your people. They were talking to your friends. They were talking to your family members. They, they had stuff to say and get it off their chest uh, to the people around you, but they never said any of these things to you. And again, what I keep feeling with this is the jealousy eyes. Watching you like, huh? You? Why? Some people can never move outside of the scope of their small environment or their small brains. And so for you to reach certain heights and go to certain areas in your life, this blows somebody's mind. And the reason why you must not rekindle this friendship is because this energy, the type of energy this person carries, God kept telling me one word, not evil, not jealous. You know, we got all these other words, but he gave me one specific word for you, number two. This person, deep, deep, deep down inside, is wicked. Wicked. That's the word God kept saying. And it's the reason why you cannot rekindle this friendship, okay? They're wicked minded, which means they sit there and they plan right in your face what you're gonna be, what you're not gonna be. And then, they orchestrate, they start orchestrating events to get you to move like their little puppet, okay? Especially, again, emphasis on if this is an ex, all right? So for my people who chose number two, please be careful because the only reason this person wants to come back into your life is because they cannot stand what they see when they look you up and they want to rearrange all of that. Okay, so that's what I get for number two. Let's go ahead and let's get to number three. For my people who chose number three, this person is in love with you, secretly. They've been secretly in love with you for years. Now, if you chose number three, this is a friend, okay? This is somebody who you had not had romantic encounters with, okay? Now, for some of you guys, the person was secretly in love with your person. So if you were in a relationship at that time, they were in love with the person who you were with and they never said anything. They just watched or they were secretly in love with you. Okay. I hope that makes sense. So fellas, if you had a homeboy, he was in love with your girl. Okay. And, uh, ladies, you know, you got your man or whatever. And then she come around and she's secretly in love with your man. Okay. But for most of you guys, this is a direct thing. You never had a romantic relationship with this person, but they were like in love with you. Okay. And in their mind, you belong to them. They didn't care who you was dating. They didn't care. Y'all just kept it on a friendship level. In their mind, they was going to get you. They had plans for you. They wanted to trap you in their own little world. And what I keep getting is that their, their world was very small. And you think way bigger than this person. But this person, uh, during the time that you were dealing with this person, maybe you guys were on the same level, or maybe you were even a little bit beneath them in terms of like how much money you were earning, the types of positions you held at your jobs. You know, this person could be older than you. How, however the case may be, this person felt like they were over you in some way, somehow. And when I say over you, I mean like uh, in command of you, like they get to 
tell you what to do. So even though you may have been dating other people, kicking it with other people, doing your thing, this person was sitting there waiting in the wings. And then the other part that's really uh, disturbing is that when you were around this person, you may have asked this person for advice with your relationship, or you may have confided in them. And I'm getting that you got bad advice on purpose. For some of you guys, your relationship ended because they wanted it to. And they fed that to you. They planted and deposited those seeds. Now, for those of you who this is the person that they were in love with your other person, the reason why this is disturbing, once again, is because the confession this person might make is that they tried to come at your person. You might get a confession, and this may break your heart, that they actually maybe even went on a date with your person. For some of y'all, they may have, you know, climbed in the sheets with that person. And it's not a rekindling happening, okay? Now, I've got to get strong with y'all today because the mindset of someone who could do you like that, that's betrayal. That's super betrayal. And so for you to let that person back into your life, that would be very naive of you. Because guess what? Even after so much time of separation, they still got that same mindset. The Bible says, y'all gonna make me preach. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind has been renewed. Some of the people who are about to come back into your path, their mind is locked. It's a big old combination lock that they do not know. And they will never be able to renew their mind. They'll never be able to change their mind. They'll never be able to think bigger and better. So it's best for you to leave them exactly where they are. And it's best for you to continue. And when God say, don't mess with them, don't talk to them, don't deal with them, Listen, all right, so that's what I get for number three. Let's go ahead and let's wrap this up. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you're about to find out somebody you thought was your friend or somebody who maybe y'all parted ways as exes. You, you thought it was okay, but you're about to find out they got a confession. And the confession is not something that's going to make you want to rekindle and skip off into the sunset with this person. It's going to make you look at them sideways. But at the same time, when you go home by yourself, individually, you guys are going to get the revelations. God is going to deposit them. He's going to download them into your spirit. And you're going to be able to see the plan. And I'm going to just call it straight up. You're going to be able to see the plan of this enemy. Because straight up from day one, they have plans for you. They looked at you and they locked their mind and said, this is what you're going to be. And because you wiggled your way out of that little mind trap, they're angry. They want to keep going. They want to continuously deposit things into your spirit to bring you down. And I'm going to do a whole separate video about that because I literally, God told me this person is up to no good. They are a fraud. They're going to try to do something. He wouldn't tell me what. And I kept trying to figure out what, what, what. So I went and hung out with this person. Mm. One thing about God, he going to give you some grace and he going to give you some space. Okay, go ahead. And once again, the second time, I'm going to do a whole separate video. The second time I did the same thing, came home, curled up in a ball, cried my heart out. But this time I was like, no more, God, no more. I don't need to know no more. I don't care who you say stay away from. I don't care how many questions I got. Why? What they do? I don't even want to know no more. Okay. If you say stay away from them, I'm out. Okay, and for some of you guys, this is the point you're about to get to. Okay, so I'm gonna do a whole separate video about that though, because that is wow, it's wow. Y'all wouldn't believe what happened. Okay, and I'm really excited to tell y'all because I'm so blessed to have encountered that without getting taken under. Okay, but in the meantime, we're gonna be continuing this over on Patreon. Okay, because we're gonna be talking a little bit deeper about like the jealousy and the envy and, and these type of like plans and all of that. Okay. So head on over to Patreon only if you want to know, okay? These are the cautionary things. These are the things where when you when God say, don't do it. And you'd be like, but why? And then these little caution envelopes pop up like, okay, read it if you want to. All right. And then with that being said, make sure you guys head on over to my Etsy shop, Dreamy Intuitive Digital Arts, where you can get you some digital art instantly. Okay. You can download these pictures. You can print them out at your crib. You can take them to Staples, Home Depot, get them printed out, put it in your favorite frame and boom, just like that. You got some water style vibes, Dreamy Intuitive Art 
just like that, okay? So if this is where it ends for you guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel, like this video, share this video. Y'all know how I go. When I be gone for a while, them numbers be dropping. Um, so you got to share the video. You got to like the video. You know what I'm saying? Engage with the video. Comment so that it could get us back into the good graces of the algorithm, all right? Um, other than that, y'all stay safe. Be safe out here. Don't be out here reconciling. All right, with people who got it out for you. Um, so, yeah, if this is what it is for you, thank you so much for watching. I'll see y'all in the next video.